All right, so what's going on, everybody? Welcome to the latest and greatest in sneakers. Now, it's the Friday show. We got a jam-packed one today. We're gonna be talking the big Jordan 1 controversy, which exploded online yesterday. We got the major Adidas sale, which everybody's been waiting on. It looks like has officially kicked off. Plus, we got the GOAT app making some big policy changes. So for anybody that uses their services, we got some important updates that you should all be aware of. Stay tuned. We're gonna kick things off, though, with a couple of quick updates. First and foremost, this big deal right here. I don't know if this is either the best deal of all time or quite possibly the worst, depending on how you look at it. Now, Adidas is giving away a free pair of Sambas, but of course there is a little bit of a catch as this deal is only exclusively available to members, which you would have to exchange 19,000 reward points for your free pair of Sambas. Now, if you guys are unfamiliar with the Adidas reward system, $1 spent would translate to 10 points. So as far as this pair of Sambas, this would run you roughly about $1,900 worth of money spent in equivalent to reward points. So depending on how you look at it, I guess you could say this is either the best or worst deal of all time. Now, based off the fact that typically when it comes to your Adidas reward points, the only thing that you can generally trade them in for is like discount vouchers, which you can't even really use on good products anyways, I would say this is not a bad deal. Plus, I do believe that your reward points expire over time if you don't use them. So be sure to go ahead and check out your Adidas app. I'm not sure if this deal is going on still. And huge salute to our man, Drip Lord from the JA Discord who put us all on game last night. Now from Nike, we had a big release hit the sneakers app. Well, I shouldn't really say big just based off how limited this drop was, which according to Elden Monitors, the Air Tech Challenger 2, we had just roughly less than 3,000 pairs drop today, which you can imagine was a very quick sellout. Now we also did see pairs drop via select retailers across the country, but for the most part, it looks like these joints are completely gone. Now we also saw the Amamania Jordan 39 sell out today, which continues the while you were sleeping pack. So with these out of the way, it looks like these Jordan 4s are up next. Now we also saw Above the Cloud team up with ASICs for a pair of GT 2160s. Now this pair actually did launch last week, but as far as today's drop, this is the wider nationwide drop. So you have a white or black option available and they're charging a buck 50 for these. Now Reebok has made today's show. It looks like we have a new Answer 3 colorway to look forward to. So unfortunately, not an OG release, but it looks like Reebok is calling these vintage chalk now i don't know who's looking to pay full price for a pair of answer threes that are not an og colorway well actually i can't think of one person i don't know if you guys watch the joe button podcast or not but there's that one bald dude that sits on the left he's probably the only person i could think of that would want to pay full price for a non OG colorway of these joints right here. And with those quick updates out of the way, let's jump into our main stories. Now this first one was a huge pump fake, which yesterday it sent sneaker Twitter on fire. So this whole thing began yesterday when Elden Monitors posted this exclusive, the Air Jordan 1 85 High OG Chicago, expected to return fall 2025 in adult and kid sizing for Jordan Brands. 40th anniversary. So of course, you know, this is major news right here. The original pair which set this whole thing off and it would make sense with Jordan Brand's 40th anniversary right around the corner. So of course, everybody was super excited and with news such as this, you already know it spread like wildfire. Every major sneaker publication posted this news and people were excited to see this classic OG pair. Now, of course, when it comes to anything like this, you know, the cool kids on sneaker Twitter, all the insiders, they had to get together for like a little Little secret meeting to fact check this statement right here and it looks like they came together with an official statement as we see Z sneakerheads shortly after this announcement they came with a rebuttal saying the Chicago Air Jordan 1 high 85 is not not capital not releasing in 2025 and I feel like the icing on the cake the real nail in the coffin had to be the peace sign emoji so of course everybody was disappointed and with this news right here of course you already know sneaker twitter is all about the jokes it sent everybody into a frenzy this dude right here he put wrong again damn so he's obviously referring to the last major leak that we got from Elden monitors where they claimed the off-white jordan one canary yellows would be coming we all saw how that one turned out to be this next dude posted a gif with this dude shooting an absolute brick of a jump shot right here a lot of jokes going on uh this dude put well that was fun lol we have another person chiming in saying hope you didn't quick sell your lost and found ones lol and then we have looks at lost and found ones 
with love. So of course, a lot of jokes, and I can guarantee you with this news, it probably low key slightly affected the resale market of those lost and found ones, but unfortunately, it is not happening. Now, of course, y'all know once these dudes probably got the intel that this leak was gonna be going down, or I'm sorry, with this information, they were probably so quick to jump on the internet for this leak right here. They were probably like, yo, we're about to go crazy viral, but maybe they should have did a little bit more of their homework. And then it looks like they did actually issue an official statement saying, update, this Air Jordan 1 85 won't be color blocked like the Chicago's, unfortunately, posting a mock-up and more details soon. So while I know they were probably super Super excited to post this intel right here. It looks like we have a situation where they found out that the color code or the color blocking would be white, varsity red, black. They assumed it would be a Chicago, but rather we're not gonna get that same exact color blocking, but rather another Jordan 185, which will share the same colors. You know, if that all makes sense. So again, man, this clout is a dangerous drug. And while I know these dudes were super excited to post this breaking news right here, again, guys got to fact check your information man i know it made sense with the 40th anniversary and everything lining up it definitely made sense but turns out it looks like this will not be happening now next up we got the big adidas sale that many people were waiting on so i came across this image which i actually discovered over on reddit so it looks like this individual had a crazy adidas outlet finding which we got a couple of pairs of fear of god athletic sneakers which is a very interesting find especially based off the fact that i want to say a couple of months back we actually saw some Fear of God Athletics products hit the Adidas outlets overseas. I want to say specifically it was in Germany. And then I did receive intel that we could expect to see Fear of God Athletics products actually hit outlets here in the state. So it looks like things have began as this individual did actually discover this at the Adidas outlet, which was somewhere in California. So apparently the two sneaker models here, which they're also going to include clothes and shoes, but it looks like they're starting to slowly roll out the process. So as far as these two sneakers, models the first one that we have here is the clay fear of god los angeles which is an update to a classic adidas model which originally came in at a hefty 170 bucks you guys can now grab these with a great 50 percent off discount bringing them down to just 85 dollars so i would say not a bad deal they did drop these in a couple of different colorways but it looks like the first find that we saw in the outlets happens to be the clay colorway now we also saw another clay pair which this happens to be the fear of god 86 low which originally came in at 200 bucks you guys can now grab these with that generous 50 percent off bringing them down to you guessed it 100 bucks so not bad for a couple of uh, fear of god sneakers right here now i would say as far as the fear of god athletics collection overall the main criticism definitely would be the pricing i don't think people were too critical of the designs and everything more so just the pricing i think overall most people would say that the product is good just a little bit too out of uh budget for a lot of people's uh you know price range or whatever so Got some Fear God products hitting the Adidas outlets. Now, I'm not sure exactly how the whole process is rolling out. We can't expect to see clothing and footwear, but it seems like they're kind of starting this rollout a little bit slow, just a couple of models. I'm expecting to see more pairs hit the outlets. Hopefully we'll see some of the basketball joints discounted because, you know, half off of 250, I feel like would not be a bad look and something that may entice me to want to go ahead and pick up some of the other colorways. So I wouldn't recommend to like run out to your Adidas outlet, but it would maybe be worth your while to maybe give your local outlet a call and see if any of these products have hit stores. So it seems like Adidas is starting to slowly roll out some of these products at select outlets across the country. So go ahead and check your local stores now as far as like the whole fear of god athletics product overall i think it's very interesting to see that adidas has now heavily discounted these already while it seems like they're just getting started it seems like this collection is just like you know still in its infancy so jerry did say that the future of the fear of god athletics adidas collaboration is riding on the success of the next two new basketball models so we'll see how this whole thing plays out it's kind of crazy to see them already dropping prices 50 percent off while we still have new items which are on the way and i couldn't imagine if they dropped them with like these regular prices that if people are already now eating off these discounts that they're gonna actually want to pay full price so we'll see how this whole thing plays out and let me know with these new discounts does this entice you to maybe want to go ahead and uh jump back on some of these fear god joints all 
right, and lastly, we got some major changes coming to the GOAT app. Now, I would say out of all of the major reselling platforms, whether it be StockX, eBay, or GOAT, I would say when it comes to sneakerheads, the preferred platform out of the majority of people, I would say would definitely have to go to the GOAT app, which is why I felt like it was very important to let you guys know of these uh, recent policy changes. So, of course, when it comes to the GOAT app, if you guys weren't aware, you can actually return products. Now, these products do have to actually be in the original condition, meaning they have to be still DS unworn, but you do actually have up to three days to make a decision if you wanna actually return something. Now you can't return everything. So like for example, um, you won't be able to return samples. You also can't return sneakers that are unreleased, but I believe anything that's like after the official release date is pretty much fair game to return, which I think is great for people. Now, I'm happy to let you guys know that as far as GOAT's return policy, they have actually extended the return window from three days to seven days, giving you guys an entire week to make a decision if you wanna actually keep your sneakers or return them for a credit. So when you do return stuff, you won't actually get refunded from the original payment, but rather a GOAT credit, just minus the shipping cost. Now, this next part right here is where I actually don't like the changes they're implementing here as it looks like they're tacking on more fees to us. So pay very close attention. So with GOAT now extending the return window, they do now offer you more ways to return, which I feel like is just a little bit confusing and just a way for them to like add in additional fees. So they say you can either do your standard return, which um, you return your items and receive the refund for items that you wish to return for a refund. Your refund amount will be the item total minus the return shipping cost, which, you know, it was always that, that's just standard. But now it looks like they have implemented a restocking fee, which will range, they say, from 15 to 20% in a processing fee uh, if applicable your return will be provided in the form of a goat credit so i would say uh, while the shipping cost of course that makes sense but with them now adding on a restocking fee which i wouldn't be too mad about a restocking fee but the fact that it's 15 to 20 percent of which sneaker costs can range anywhere from like 100 200 bucks and up just depending on the shoe i feel like that 20 percent can definitely add up so i'm not a fan of that now they do offer some other you know methods where they can you can list your shoe which apparently they will um, lower that restocking fee to five percent where they will actually try to resell your sneaker for you or you can actually just go ahead and um, list them yourself in which apparently you will not be charged a commission fee so a couple of different options when it comes to returns but with goat previously you were able to return stuff and then they would just pretty much take care of all of the hassle for you just minus the i guess 15 dollars shipping cost but now as they've extended the window it looks like they're adding in more options in which they're trying to tack on this extra 15 to 20 percent stocking fee which i'm not really feeling like and it seems like when it comes to these major reselling platforms people are already fed up with the fact that StockX seems to add all these unnecessary fees fees and it seems like goat <laughs> is going down that same road as well so i feel like this is kind of disappointing news at first i thought it was great because we had more time to return our product but it seems like that was just kind of maybe smoke and mirrors a way for them to add on these extra additional fees and i don't like it so let me know what you guys think and as far as like sneaker resale in general i really don't find myself paying resale prices for any releases too much nowadays for me i feel like it's either retail or bust for a lot of these pairs. And a lot of times I even like to wait to crop sneakers, you know, as far as when they actually go on sale. So I think kind of when it comes to sneaker buying habits for a lot of people, that's starting to change. And people aren't willing to pay these crazy, ridiculous resale prices. So it seems like maybe some of these resale platforms in order to make up some of those lost um, dividends, they're maybe tagging on some of these extra fees. I don't know, maybe some of these companies out here are hurting and this is the tactics they have to resort to in order to uh, make up for some of those margins. So let me know what you guys think about this major policy, this major update which does affect everybody that uses the GOAT app, which seems to be the preferred reselling platform amongst sneakerheads. Has that now changed with these new policies which have been integrated? It's also important to note that this effect does change any order which was purchased or sold um, actually effective of September 3rd this year so make sure you guys are aware of these policy changes and as far as before we head up out of here i did want to mention the poll of the day where 
I simply ask you guys, since we're speaking about resale right now, this actually aligns perfectly. What's the most amount of money you spent on a single pair of shoes? So I ask you guys, was it 300 plus, 400, 500, or sometimes you guys be even going crazy paying $600 plus for sneakers. So again, my reach, I don't know why YouTube is blocking my reach, but we had just roughly a little bit over 500 votes, which the majority of you guys just said a little bit above $300. So I don't know if you guys are capping or not, but it seems like uh, many of these sneakerheads here for this audience are a little bit more budget friendly and are looking to pay these ridiculous prices. But then on the other side of things, coming in in second place at 28%, you guys said 600 plus. So I don't know if you guys just bought those 950 boots for full price, which retailed at 600 bucks, or if you guys are just paying these crazy resale prices. Because as we talked about just previously, I feel like nowadays, we're kind of dead on paying these stupid, crazy resale markups and people are looking for a budget nowadays or a little bit of a bargain nowadays as most people are on budget. So appreciate everybody that participated in the poll of the day. If you guys ever want to check that out, you can always find it here on the community tab for this channel. So appreciate everybody and a special thank you to everybody that made it all the way to the end of the video. Go ahead and drop a salute in the comment section. You guys are super appreciated. And if you enjoyed today's video, everybody, you can help out an independent creative by hitting the little thumbs up button down below it helps out the channel tremendously so we're gonna wrap it up right here i'm ja of course i will catch you guys on monday in the meantime have a great weekend stay safe stay blessed and i'll catch y'all next time i'm out love <laughs>